Good morning, everyone. Here's another problem from this chapter that presents us with a particular challenge. We have this cat that's taking a running start up a frictionless ramp, and we're helping it out by uh, providing a push, as you see here. The only tool we're allowed to use is the work energy theorem. So that means we can't use any free body diagrams or sum of forces to solve the problem. Sounds rough, right? Well, I promise it's less intimidating than it seems. In fact, this should only take us a couple minutes at most. Let's start by setting up a coordinate system that's parallel and perpendicular to the ramp, like this. We've seen in a couple problems like this already that forces perpendicular to the ramp, which would be the y component of the cat's weight and the normal force of the ramp acting on the cat, those won't do any work here. The only forces that will do work are along the direction of the ramp, which are the force we're applying, which is positive, and then the x component of the cat's weight, which is negative. We have a nice problem here where everything acts along a single direction, so we don't need that integral definition of work here. All we do is just take the magnitude of the forces and multiply them by the distance that they act over. The distance involved is the same for both forces, since that's just the entire length of the ramp, so we can actually factor that out. If we plug in the numbers for our forces, here's what we get. Now, we have an extra significant figure in this result, uh, since this one has four and all of these other numbers up here, uh, well, except for the 100, have three, but that's okay. We're allowed to bring an extra significant figure along on the way to the final result, since this isn't the answer yet. Now that we know the net work done on the cat as we pushed it up the ramp, we can use the work energy theorem to finish things up. The goal is to isolate this final velocity variable, so let's multiply both sides by 2 and divide both sides by the cat's mass. Then we can add the initial velocity squared to both sides and take the square root of both sides as well. When we plug in our numbers and report our answer to the proper number of significant figures, which is 3, we end up with the following result, a final velocity of 6.58 meters per second. And that's it for this problem. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day.